we all have dreams, big and small, that create a life in our minds different than our reality. All the while, we watch others seemingly make it happen. I'm Rachel Denson, a farm girl turned mortgage guru, moonlighting as your self-help cheerleader. Together, we'll pull back the curtain with intentional conversations and discover how you get there. Hello. Welcome to How You Get There. I'm joined with a very special guest today. You know him. You love him. Today, he said he's feeling not very influential, but it's my husband, Chad Denson. Chad, thanks for joining me. So glad to join you. I got him here by pumping his ego and letting him know that his episode is the second highest listened episode because I really need him. I feel blessed. I'll give the people what they want. We'll do that. That's right. We're giving the people what they want. We are fortunate enough this week to be on vacation. And I will tell you, I was very close to just saying, you know, Joel, just like, let's just skip a week. Let's not put anything out. I'm on vacation. I would planned on like, I thought I, my energy was going to be up to like, want to record while we were here and truly it wasn't. I was able to like finally relax after a little mini stress meltdown on day two. And since then, I have been just like really, really relaxed and able to keep in the groove of like not doing anything but fun stuff. Like I've read a whole book. We did Chad's favorite, Silent Disco. Silent Disco. Chad, do you want to explain silent disco for anybody who doesn't know? So you wear earmuffs or headphones, whatever you want to call them. They got two different songs playing on two different colors. So you aimlessly dance around with nothing in the environment, but you and your headphones. It's pretty reckless. It's entertaining. It's more entertaining if you're the person that doesn't like to participate and just listen to all the chaos going on around you of people screaming and singing because they don't think anybody can hear them, but when you don't have your headphones on, you can definitely hear them. So. Because the only where the only place the music is playing is in the headphones. So, like we're outside and it's dead quiet. Other than yeah, like Chad said, he will like me singing along. I love it though because we you like we're surrounded by all of these adults that have no care in the world like this one guy break danced like somebody's jumping up on a little fire pit ledge and dancing around i just think so vacation energy in adults is just very unique and i'm always here for it she's there for the energy and i'm sitting there saying that guy's gonna catch himself on fire that guy broke his hip this lady spilled a drink all over somebody it's a mess anyways so we decided to sit down early this morning and we're gonna, and I, and I got to thinking about it. I'm like, no, you know, I can sit down and show up for something that I know I would regret skipping. It's kind of like going to the gym, like getting the laptop open, pressing record is the hardest part. It's kind of like, you know, getting to the gym, getting your shoes on is the hardest part going to the gym after you're there. It flies by, you get it done. You're proud of what you've accomplished and you can check another, another week off the box, box of the week off. Check another box. Check another box. Oh, well, I guess I was trying to say like, I can set, set I can successfully say I have recorded another week. Yeah. I've continued my weekly show. You followed up to your commitment to yourself. Correct. Okay. So Chad, but after Chad's very special episode that went totally off the books, Chad's joining me and we're going to run through my standard segments for the week. The first segment is release or recommit. This is where we talk about something we're releasing from our life that doesn't align that we're not about anymore or something we're recommitting to that really matters to us. And we're going to figure out a way to stick with it or reintegrate it. I'm going to let you go first. You want me to go first? But I got to pick one per category. No, you just pick one, one or the other. You're either re releasing or you're recommitting. I'm releasing negative energy. Anybody that brings it, talks about it, judges, 
Don't care. Released. I kind of thought that was already how you lived your life. How do you feel like you're going to do that? See, this isn't fair because you know me, but nobody else knows me. They don't know that. You just blew up my one easy out. So now I got to recommit to something. No, just explain. Okay, so if you've got it all, if you've got this whole thing so, figured out, because I think a lot of people would love to, be, I know I think about that with you and I'm like, yeah, I wish I could just like on off switch that. I guess you want to pull back the curtain a little bit about how, if you feel like you're already doing that with negative energy, how do you do it? I don't let it play into my confidence or what I do or who I am. I just be authentic every day. Do you like verbally shut people down when they're negative or do you just mentally shut them down? It depends on the situation. But if like, so for example, if I'm dealing with somebody that you really can't get away from, because that's where a lot of people feel that negativity is when they're sitting there saying this person is just so negative and I have to go work with them or I have to go do this with them. Then one suggestion I would have is to revert the conversation in a positive manner that doesn't really draw so much negativity. Good stuff. That's what I would do. I'm just trying to keep it simple this morning because I'm on vacation. Sorry, I'm not very lively. <laughs> I'm just thinking about, you know when Chad is I'm lively? I'm thinking about a cooler and water and sun. You're just trying to check this box and get out of here, huh? I'm kind of checking the box on everybody. I'm sorry. We're going to go to the gym after this anyway, so, yeah. so you're not getting to the beach that quick. I'll tell you where Chad really is not halfway committal. It's water volleyball. Oh, we're hundred percent. It's full send. I don't care how, what your age is or who you are. If we play water volleyball, I'm spiking that, <laughs> and it's coming right at you. One hundred vacation, Chad. One hundred percent. Yes, like he said the other day, we we're laying there, and he's like, "I'm gonna go play beach volleyball." It's like, okay, or water volleyball. It's not on the on the sand. Yeah, play in the sand because they have rocks in the sand. So if you dove or committed, just tear your legs apart. This guy next to me is like, don't play the sand volleyball. Your legs will look like mine. He had cuts all over his legs. So also we are at, so we're at an, at an all-inclusive resort. I think this just speaks to like the whole environment that we're in. And I'm so here for it. Can I just say like, this is maybe my, okay. Back to our segment. This is what I'm going to, you, do you recommitted? I'm going to, did you recommit or release? Not released. Okay. I'm going to recommit. I'm going to recommit to showing up with my sandals energy and the pickleball sandals people energy, like in my day to day life. So we are here with, I, we found out last night, there's a group of like 75 or. Yeah. 75. Oh, is that 75? What? I thought that was okay. I, no, there's this, there's a sound at the door and it sounds like Stevie Nicks. Yeah, the cat didn't catch a flight and just show up the Bahamas. You're terrible. <laughs> you knew exactly what I was I thinking. Mean, it's, it's like the damn cat tearing the door. I was like, is there a cat it's at like our door? The people sweeping the stairwell. There are cats here. Okay. So clearly also sandals, Rachel doesn't have as attention span is even worse. We are here was like a group of 75 pickleball club people. They all made this group trip here for a pickleball tournament. And they are just showing up with this like full send energy in anything they're doing. Silent disco, clearly pickleball. They've made a whole trip about pickleball. They also are a big proponent in the water volleyball. They are playing the games at the pool side. They have no cares in the world about what onlookers think. And it's like also not alcohol induced. It's not this whole, oh, I'm going to, you know, get trashed and then not care. It's like, no, they literally are just doing what they want. They're being goofy. They're having the best time, like enjoying themselves and it's contagious. And I, if anything, want to recommit to continuing to be that kind of catalyst in my own real life. Cause I will say, I think I'm that person a lot of times where I will be like, raise my hand. I'll be the goofy one. I'll show up. I'll, 
you know, play along, but it, it almost, they are, they are so intense here that they made me feel like I was holding on to my cool card the first couple of days. Like I almost felt like I was the one not wanting to go all in because they were like so intense. And then it's contagious to where after silent disco, I'm like dancing with them. I'm in the middle of it. And even you kind of let go of your cool card a little bit during silent disco, but you'd already like joined in on the water volleyball. And I just think as adults, like we need to play more. I'm just going to really recommit to playing more, I guess, and doing, you know, and being a full admitting full force when I'm into something. This is kind of like a reiteration of the epiphany I had during Taylor Swift too. You know, I told you about that. Like, yeah, I know you did. I'm just sitting here thinking like playful, but not bearing the pranks. You want to bring pranks. I'm going to win. No, that is not, I'm not, <laughs> I don't like surprises. It nor was easy. Well, I, was hoping, I, was, I don't like surprises either. I'm going to win though. Okay. I'm bringing competitive back. Okay. So. We've released or recommitted. That's right. Now we're moving on to a different segment. Anyone? Just me? So it's where we share something that maybe we're thinking about that we wonder if other people are thinking about too, or if you've realized it's not just you out in the world, the, the way this is your brain works. I've got mine already, so I'll go first so you can have an example. Right, go for it. Book recommendation of the week on the aside is Book Lovers by Emily Henry. Amazing. I cried when it ended. I mean, I re I want to reread it, and I never reread. I want to go back and reread her other two books because I love it so much that I just can't even let it go. It was so good, and probably one of my like one of my most favorite books I read in a really long time. And I'm a rom com girly, so like, you know, I'll appreciate other books, but just like that has my heart. And I mean, even from the first three pages, I'm cackling out loud like while I'm reading it I love it and I also think I really resonate with this character she's very type a loves a schedule organized well anyways at towards the end they make a reference about that this character's like bad dream is not like waking up being like you know naked in front of a crowd it's that like it's the last day of school and she's never gone to math class and I had one of those moments like, oh my gosh, so it's not just me that has those dreams because I can tell one of my main stress dreams is like, it used to be, I was in the Miss Murray State pageant only like as an adult and I would wake up or like I was in it and I like didn't know the dance. I didn't have a dress like, but I was like having to be in the pageant and I was just scrambling around and then it's kind of morphed to, I have had dreams where I'm finishing college and I realize I've never gone to class and I'm scared I've failed. And I think it's so funny when like you have this human experience of, oh, it's not just me that has the, like, it do doesn't that surprise you that we all have the same dreams kind of? In a way. Yeah. It's funny. I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that feel aligned to that type of dream i mean there's all kinds of dreams fall off buildings stuff like that right but that we all have yeah. and like i've heard some like we talked about the other day like teeth falling out is a dream but i have never i didn't know like it's funny to hear that somebody else like really has almost the exact same dream as me well in a book especially yeah book. exactly okay you got one after that example anyone just me does anybody think scrub daddy is really worth three dollars and 29 cents when you can buy like 15 other brillo pads to put on a little scotch thing and clean a pan that are like 56 cents a piece what makes scrub day so special he smiles at you and he frowns when he's dirty i don't think he frowns when he's dirty i thought he's supposed to frown or something when he's bad <laughs> i have no idea either you wear out the scrub daddy once you wear out his smile he like frowns and then you have to throw him away huh i didn't know that I think that's what it is, or am I making that up? I don't know. Sounds cool. They need to advertise it that way. He's always smiling. There's no way he can always smile. Scrub Daddy is a different kind of consistency. Like when I got my first one after Letty had one, because. So they sold you on texture. 
Well, no, I just like really admire, like, I think Letty keeps a very clean house and like is very organized. So when we went to Florida and she had one, I just wanted one. And then I bought one and then I got it wet and it like hardly even scrunched. Like it doesn't wear out like another sponge. I think the smile is just to be cute. Just to be cute. So the perception of a clean house with a scrub daddy made you buy a scrub daddy so you feel or perceive that our house is clean. I just wanted one, I guess. And it has this cute little thing with eyes and a mouth holder that you can just shove in and then just sits there. We don't have the holder, though. No, but I want one. So why didn't you buy the one with the holder? I couldn't find that one. There's this thing in 2024. It's called the Internet. It's pretty legit saying, I want the smiley face scrub daddy holder. I'm going to make one called like frowny scrub daddy. And it's like, I was about to say, you're anyone just me. Is that your constant is always like, we should make that. We should invent that. We should start one of those. Like your little entrepreneurial brain always is going in. Why not? Can I tell you something? I'm going to admit something. So I thought I had figured out something that we could invent while we were here. Because I'm going to get a little personal here. I really enjoy my squatty potty because I'm short. So my feet don't touch on a lot of toilets. <laughs> and so I thought, travel, travel one. Somebody needs to invent that. Squatty potty beat me to it. They do have a travel one that collapses and everything. So I, for like five seconds, thought I had finally found her entry into the market. But no. <laughs> no comment. I'm not saying anything on that. <laughs> A portable squatty body. It already exists, but yes. I'm sure it does. For $50. They probably patented the use of the word. Probably going to get sued now. I would just, maybe they'll see it as, an, as, a, as, a, as a plug. Yes, instead of uh, me trying to uh, it, inter... Are you a short queen or a short king? Get you a squatty potty. Oh, you just thought, thought of him a tagline too. Okay, well... After anyone just me, we're going to wrap things up with a self-care tip of the week. Chad, you got one? Yeah. Do you want a forehead like this or do you want a forehead like that? Get Botox. It can fix your life. <laughs> I.e., you can tell that there's nothing been done to this forehead besides a lot of damage. It actually kind of looks good on camera, surprisingly. But I, gotta I was about to say, I don't think you can tell. Mine is very shiny, though. I guess Chad, Chad's... Which it's not a secret because I talk about it in real life, but I do get for Botox in my forehead because my dermatologist told me when I was like 23, he was like, yeah, your forehead line is substantial. And if you don't start fixing it now, you're not going to. And so, yes, I like whole foods. I'm very uh, into natural self-care, but that is one toxin I will indulge in and absolutely will hang my hat on. my. Self-care tip of the week is, I thought of it, and now it's gone. Well, my actual self-care tip, my actual self-care tip is to invest time in yourself and put energy into yourself. So whether that is, i.e. reading a book or doing things to better yourself, focus on yourself and not the outside things that you can't control. Fill your cup. It's literally self-care. You just summarize self care tip of the week. I don't understand the definition of it. I'm just here to help. Self care tip of the for week. Us, Do self care. Us people who, you know, I'm just trying to help. I'm trying to make sure everybody understands the concept. That's all. Okay. It's not because I didn't understand that. <laughs> I'm not really good at this podcast thing. We make it work though. Chad Denson in rare form today. My self-care tip of the week is I have found some sunscreen that I really enjoy. It is actually like an oil. So for anybody who used to be a sun fanatic like myself, I was always doing the tanning oils, wanted to bake, get brown, all the things. And then after I got diagnosed with my autoimmune disease, I cut that out. It kind of brings back some nostalgia of feeling a little bit like I'm enjoying 
like actually being in the sun again, like, which I love being in the sun, but it's not like as meticulous as lathering on this white sunscreen. It's an oil. So it just, it like my skin feels nice and moisturized. It is actually, I have a spray and a stick. So like I can put the stick on my face and it, it feels really nice. I can put it on my shoulders and like, it's supposed to be meant for like bony parts, I guess, that like stick in the sun and it actually like lasts really good. And you can tell if it's there or not because it's got the oily feel and it's 50 SPF. So it's called Super Goop and I'm going to link a, um, or leave a link in the show notes if you want to check it out for yourself. So I think the, the summary of that would be think about something you miss that you don't do anymore but there's like parts of it that you enjoy. And like Chad said earlier, the internet's a great place. See if something exists that's a better version, a version that aligns with what you're after now, but that still gives you the peace of what you had to let go of. For me, you know, the losing the tanning oil, now I have oil sunscreen. And it really made me realize And I didn't even realize it until I started using it, how nice it felt to like spray oil instead of some white lotion that I have to rub in for forever. Any final thoughts, Chad? If you have any fun topics that you want me to cover, just let me know. I'm more than happy to give everybody more of me if that's what they really want. And you can't find him really on the internet. So if you want to get to Chad, and really this is just anybody who knows him in his personal life knows the best way to get to Chad is through me, his secretary. Because I don't have, you know, because I got plenty of time on my hands. So the other things I do in my spare time is coordinate his schedule. But no, seriously, thank you for joining me, Chad, and hopping on for a quick little How You Get There episode. And, you know, it really means more than I say that you indulge me and support me on my podcast journey. I do. Just because I love you. Thanks. Okay. See you next week. How you get there, listeners. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining me this week. I hope this episode met you where you were at and it's given you your own clarity on steps forward for how you get there. Wherever and whatever that is, it is important and your dreams matter. I would love to hear what you think of this episode and how you get there. You can connect with me personally via email at howyougetthere at gmail.com Or you can find me at Rach Ross Denson on Instagram, TikTok, and all other social media platforms. If you love how you get there, I have a favor to ask. Will you share this episode with a friend and take a few seconds to follow, rate, and review how you get there wherever you listen to your podcast? Please know you are playing a part in making my dream come to life. And for that, I am so grateful. Don't forget, if where you want to go in the future involves a home loan, I would love to help you. Find me on Instagram at Rachel Denson underscore MLO to learn all about mortgages from my videos or use the link in the bio to schedule a one-on-one consultation with me. I hope to see you back here next week where we'll keep talking all about how you get there.